powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Hello, good Sunday evening, folks. Thank you for closing out your weekend with us. I'm Dustin Kleeman. We begin with breaking news tonight. A man shot in the chest at a house party in Lockwood, now in critical condition. Yellowstone County Sheriff deputies responded to a house party on Old Harden Road shortly before 8 p.m. A male had brandished a firearm and in the process, one round went off and struck another male in the upper chest. Now, Sergeant Robert Lester says drugs were involved and it does appear to be an accidental discharge at this time. The victim was transported to St. Vincent Hospital and is enlisted in critical condition. He was able to provide a statement to deputies before surgery. No arrests have been made. The suspect is being fully cooperative with the investigation. And uh, law enforcement is working on a search warrant right now to obtain access to the house. Lester did say all involved either appeared late teens or early 20s, and they could in face charges. We'll be following the very latest on that. In national news, three major Alabama newspapers have endorsed the Democratic candidate in the state's special Senate election. Several women have come forward in accusing the Republican Roy Moore of making unwanted sexual advances. CBS News' Laura Podesta has the latest. The Alabama Media Group, owner of three major newspapers in the state, released an editorial Sunday telling readers to reject Roy Moore and vote for his Democratic opponent, Doug Jones. Multiple women have accused Moore of making unwanted sexual advances. The editorial board wrote the allegations illustrate a pattern of a man in his 30s, quote, courting and preying on young women and girls. Right. Tina Johnson is accusing Moore of inappropriate behavior after a meeting at his law office back in the 90s. We got up to leave, and when we did, um, my mother went first, and he grabbed me from behind um, on my buttocks. Moore and his family have denied all allegations against the former judge. Even after all the attacks against me, against my family, against the foundation, and now against my husband, he will not step down. White House aide Mark Short said President Trump was concerned about several aspects of the story. He has concerns about the accusations, but he's also concerned that these accusations are 38 years old. Roy Moore has been in public service for decades, and the accusations did not arise until a month before elections. Thank you. The Alabama you. special election is December 12th. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Now today, another Republican senator, Susan Collins of Maine, said she hoped voters in Alabama don't elect Moore. Meanwhile, Minnesota Democratic Senator Al Franken has no intention of stepping down. Spokesperson for Franken told the Minnesota newspaper, no when asked if the senator would resign in the wake of a woman saying Franken forcibly kissed her and groped her while she slept in 2006. Franken's Senate colleagues have called for a Senate Ethics Committee investigation into his behavior, and in a statement, Franken apologized for his actions and said he welcomed an ethics probe into his conduct. LeVar Ball, the father of one of UCLA players arrested in China, is taking fire from President Trump for suggesting the president had little to do with the release of the players. Now, Trump sent out a tweet on Sunday morning saying, quote, now that the three basketball players are out of China and saved from years of jail, LeVar Ball, the father of LiAngelo, is unaccepting of what I did for his son and that shoplifting is no big deal. I should have left them in jail, end quote. Now, the three players, including LiAngelo Ball, were arrested for allegedly shoplifting last week. All three players did thank the president after flying back home. Also, President Trump said a decision on importing elephant trophies into the U.S. will come next week. He tweeted Sunday, quote, Big game trophy decision will be announced next week, but will be very hard-pressed to change my mind that this horror show in any way helps conservations of elephants or other animal. Trump announced that he would postpone the decision in a tweet on Friday at the surprise of administration employees and interest groups. Research published Friday by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service said that killing African elephant trophy animals in Zimbabwe to a certain time period will enhance an animal's survival. A source with knowledge of the agency's process called Trump intervening an uncharted situation for a president. Some pro-hunting groups are still confident that the proposed policy change will go forward. We come back to Montana. An Ashland man is dead after crashing his vehicle early Saturday morning. Montana Highway Patrol reporting the 41-year-old driver lost control of the vehicle on a curve near Busby. In the GMC Sierra, he was driving rolled. The man was ejected and pronounced dead on scene. 
Alcohol is a suspected factor in the crash. Road conditions were dry at the time. No one else was involved. This crash marks the 167 death on Montana roadways this year. We switch now. We go to weather. Rob Griggs joining us, our friend, where we get to talk a little about what to expect this coming week. And there are some good things uh, on tap. There is. Uh, temperatures mainly for folks that are traveling for Thanksgiving and also the day after for folks that are shopping. That's right. Not too bad for that. So great pictures. I thought we'd show you what sunrise looked like today in Laurel. This is a beauty from Edie Armstrong. I want you to notice the pinks, those hues there in the sky. Very nice. Keep that in mind because I've got another one for you in just a second. Meanwhile, in the Clarks Fork Canyon, Randy Fifley was watching for the mountain goats. Caught a couple of them resting up on the side of the hill. Great shot, Randy. And then back to those sunrises out of Livingston. Lisa Holmquist caught the oranges. So we kind of have uh, this nice little blend of different colors. And of course, it has been uh, very nice weather for capturing sunrises and sunsets. How warm is it going to get? Could we break a record? And when is this wind going to stop already? We've got all the answers and all the details in the Storm Tracker forecast in just a couple minutes. Dustin? All right, Rob, looking forward to that. Thank you. With another Thanksgiving and holiday season upon us, the, this year, let delicious food produced by Montana farmers and ranchers be a part of your holiday menu. Russell Nemitz shares more in tonight's Montana Ag segment. Knowing where your food is coming from when it's going on the table is something that's very, very special. Here in Montana, more and more grocery markets are embracing the farm to table concept and feature local meats and fresh vegetables. Lucky's in Billings is one of them. The best part about it is seeing them come through our back door with product and how proud they are and how grateful they are that um, they can reach a large audience of people through our store. So seeing the smile on their face when they come in the back door um, and how much they appreciate us supporting them is great. 2J's Fresh Market in Great Falls also appreciates the relationship they have with local farmers and ranchers. We are a locally owned business and we like to support the local community and it just helps the surrounding areas in Montana and keeps our money here. These local farmers and ranchers also provide both markets with plenty of delicious ingredients perfect for your holiday meal. We do have a handful of Hooterite turkeys. We get a small all allocation of those every year. Um, we carry a ton of Wheat Montana products, which is, uh, you know, flour, uh, bread, oats, that kind of stuff that's made here in the state. We have our local potatoes um, that are from the Glendale colony. And then we have um, our Lifeline milks and cheeses, along with Kalispell Creamery. And according to the American Farm Bureau Federation, food is still a real bargain and our farmers and ranchers make the Thanksgiving Day feast affordable. The Thanksgiving dinner cost survey showed that overall this year the price of a Thanksgiving dinner is $49.12. That's down 75 cents or 1.5% from last year and shows that the Thanksgiving dinner is down for the second consecutive year in a row and remains below $5 per person. So this year during the holidays, let us be extra thankful for Montana farmers and ranchers because after all, they work hard, not just during the holiday season, but all year long so that the rest of us can enjoy a safe, abundant and affordable food supply. Reporting from Lucky's here in Billings, I'm Russell Nemitz, MTN News. Thank you very much, Russell. And he says both Lucky's and 2J's are always seeking more locally raised and grown meat and vegetables because their customers tell them knowing where their food comes from is important. Also for holiday season, you might want to get a tree this year, right? Knights of Columbus Christmas Tree Lot is more than just selling trees. It's also about community service. Traditionally, the trees arrived the weekend before Thanksgiving. Trucks came in from Sandpoint, Idaho, delivering 1,100 trees right on time to the parking lot of St. Pius and another 450 to St. Bernard's in the Heights. The tree sale goes back at least 45 years before the St. Pius lot was even paved. Students from Central High School help unload the trees, and for some, it's part of their community project for the National Honor Society. The money raised goes to helping Knights of Columbus make donations to 15 different charities around the area. Also, the Billings Symphony Chorale performing its biggest concert at St. Patrick's Co. Cathedral. And this year's program celebrates 500 and 500, the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. It's Luther's Legacy, Billings Symphony Chorale performing that. Luther sang tenor and played the lute and was composer. The music was a big part of church services 
A crowd concert held at the Catholic Church celebrates German monk Martin Luther and the Reformation. The irony wasn't lost on us, but we've performed a lot of our concerts, our chorale concerts here at St. Patrick. Uh, we really enjoy working with their staff. It's a beautiful space for concerts. Well, the credit goes to our chorale director, Dr. Stephen Hart. You know, this was the 500th anniversary, so it made sense to do that theme this year. You know, it sort of is like a church service. It is and it isn't, but the, the power of the, the concert experience here, the, the sound, the beauty of this space, it's just a really uplifting experience, so it feels like going to church anyways. Reformation, by the way. I can say words correctly. I want to be clear with you. The Chorale also performed the same program last night at St. Patrick's. Still ahead on the Q2 Sunday News, the Capitol tree comes from Montana. So is its topper. We'll show you what's headed to D.C. courtesy of the 406. Plus, to continue our Big Sky series tonight. I love that. And later in sports, we'll tell you what Montana college football teams did this season for the first time in a quarter century. You're watching MTN News with Dustin Kleeman, Storm Tracker Weather with Rob Griggs, and Sports with Casey Conlon. This is the Q2 10 o'clock news in high definition.